Hello. Yo. Welcome to Cool Ranch Corner, episode 60. We were supposed to have a guest, uh, but it turns out they were moving to a, a new home, I guess. So that, that seemed like a good reason to push it to um, next episode. Uh, but I did reach out to a backup uh, thinking that maybe that just won't work out. And uh, that person also might be joining us. So maybe we'll have a two-person episode to make up for the fact that episode 60 doesn't have a guest. Um, two really cool guys. Chill guys. Yes, sir. But um, what's new with you, man? Uh, so I'm starting third shift, which is kind of funny because I remember like just recently I was like, yeah, I'm on first and it sucks. Oh, now I'm on second. So now I'm going to third, but uh, this is my choice. Like I, I, I'm choosing to go to third. It's going to be nice because I'll wake up like middle of the night, right? Drive to work, no traffic. Okay. Get off work in like the early morning, like like eight o'clock, right? Drive home, traffic's still not too bad. All the stores are still mostly empty and stuff like that. Like, it's gonna be nice. I'm gonna be awake during the day, which is not usual. Like, usually I, I, I wake up and then like most of my time is spent at night. Like I usually go to bed at like four in the morning and now that won't be the case. So I'm I'm excited to see daylight, you know? <laughs> that's, that's, that's... Uh, I I remember I worked um I think I worked third shift when when I was at the air station for like six months. Not if not even six months. I think I like I was like, yo, get me off of this as soon as you can because like you don't fly. Like I was like, yeah, I don't you know. I mean you I think I think if you were on third shift, you didn't have to stand duty. And I was like, I want to stand duty. That's like where the cool shit happens, you know? Mm. And so I it, I don't think it was even a full six months that I was on there. Um, and then, like, I started flying more than anybody else. So that was whatever. But um, I did not like getting off work at midnight and then, like, going home and, like, needing to eat and shower and all that stuff. And then it's, like, 2 a.m. by the time I've gotten, like, everything situated. Because it's San Francisco, so... You know, everything's a pain in the ass, but um, I did not like getting up late and going to bed, like going to bed late and waking up late just always felt off to me. Yeah. Well, uh, so and that's the thing. So second shift, the way that it, it's worked for me for the past basically year, because I've been, well, it's probably closer to like nine months, but basically it's like people, a lot of people will do one of two things. Either they will wake up early in the morning or not early in the morning but like earlier in the day i should say and uh then they'll do their shift and then they'll go to bed right when they get home and i'm like no i need like some wind down time like i can't i can't just immediately go straight to bed so i would wake up at, i can't either yeah yeah i'd wake up at like i don't know uh like usually 12 30 maybe one o'clock in, in the afternoon and then do do a nine hour shift from two thirty or three o'clock to like midnight, twelve thirty, whatever, right? And then I go to bed at like four or four thirty. And um, with this, since it's gonna be a well, actually, so it, it technically it was nine and a half hours because of the lunch. Um, but this shift is gonna be seven hours, and I get paid the same as if I was, as if I was working nine. So makes sense. I I work less hours and. It's it's like third shift. Some people, or, or some places, they will do third shift where it's like the middle of the night, and that's where you're there. Whereas me, I I've kind of made it so that like I leave at like a normal time where people are awake. So it's I don't know. Like I'm I'm like it doesn't seem that bad. One of the guys at work is like trying to go to first shift, and he's like, "There's there's no way I'm gonna get it though because like with all the union stuff, it's really hard to like push someone off that shift if you don't have seniority. And I'm like, dude, go to third. No one wants to be on third and you still get to go outside at like a normal time. You don't get that with second. He's like, ah, I don't know. But I'm excited. I think I think it's super underrated. This, the way they do third shift where, where I work. Um, but God, man, I just, I just, I hate going to the store in the afternoon. It's, all, it's always busy. And so now I don't have to deal with that. And it's just like my favorite part about it. Yeah, I was telling Chris you still got to try uh, Sprite Cranberry. He hasn't tried it yet. Maybe they'll have it in stock soon, dude. I, I don't know. When I went last time, like, there was nothing Sprite last Cranberry. Last year, they like. had, like, an initial drop, and then it was gone, like, the whole winter. And so that's why I stocked up this time. I, I mean, it's partly a joke, but... 
I can't believe that it's actually like good though, because the meme was like the it was I love the, it. was it was it LeBron who was it, who who was it that was doing the, the yeah it's like want a sprite cranberry yeah, want a sprite cranberry and then it was like the the I don't know it, anyways I didn't think it was gonna taste good so that's why I was like whatever the yeah. past few years but if you're saying it's good then maybe, yeah I'll probably try it soon as I, soon as I find zero it zero sugar too man you can get zero sugar that's the way that I go well but, I, I got um, little Caesars today and I I, I uh. I, I was kind of surprised. So I I got zero sugar Pepsi the past like week at work, right? Just just because I haven't had. Zero it's sugar good, Pepsi right? Well, it, it's good, but then I try I tried the regular Pepsi today because that's all that little teachers have, and it tastes the exact same. It's I'm telling weird. you, Pepsi. I I tell everybody I'm like because everybody's like, oh, Coke Zero is so good. I'm like, dude, you got to try Pepsi. Somehow they figured out how to make it taste like the syrup exactly. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, it is at, at like hands down the best like zero sugar cola, Pepsi Zero Sugar. I like um, the way that certain like when I go to Chipotle and when I go to Cinemark, they have Coke products. For some reason, their Coke Zero tastes better than any Coke Zero. It's almost like getting Diet Coke from McDonald's. They they like they like keep the syrup cold all the way oh, they through have like the whole metal, thing metal and like metal canisters yeah, but for it or they don't whatever. Do yeah. that. I don't think they do that for this, but for some reason, whatever version of the syrup they get at Cinemark and they get at Chipotle, it tastes exactly the same. And like, that's my go-to when I go to those places. But Pepsi yeah. Zero Sugar is a game changer. The cans are like, literally the first time I had it, I was like, is this, I like, I had to do a double take. I was like, bro, that literally tastes like syrup. Like the only thing that it didn't have it obviously is that corn syrup coating that you get on your teeth, you yeah. know, but it tastes like it. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I've got lots of updates. So we officially have a composer attached to always ready my first feature film. And um, it was funny because his name is Zane Alexander. And if you go on IMDb, there's like 10 of them. <laughs> there's so many Zane oh. Alexanders, but none of them have profile pictures. So I'm like, I don't know if this guy's done anything before this and that. Um, he is a, I guess he describes himself as a post-wave synthwave artist. Um, so it's a very niche kind of synthwave. But I listened to a lot of his music while I was writing the script. And so the fact that we have him as the composer is just like mind blowing to me. It's like, it's like if I listened to any you know artist and was like, oh man, I love this music so much, but you know, the odds of them composing it or whatever. I actually got the guy who made the music that I want to use, and so it's like now we're gonna use that music, and he's gonna also make some original music, and it's I think it's gonna it, it just it just adds another level of like uniqueness to the film, and uh, I I shared some of his music in the discord and everybody was like dude this is good running music and i'm like yeah we're gonna be doing lots of running montages and it's like perfect i, I shared some with you last night it's very unique sounding stuff um i uh i sent him an email and he thought it was somebody impersonating me and so i reached out to him on Bandcamp, and then he was like okay and then like we got hopped to the call and um Super nice guy, uh, lives in like North Carolina, which I was there. I lived there for like six months, so we had something to, to break the ice there. But uh, he liked Pollo Loco, said he watched it twice. So I was, uh, it was very cool to see that he like already liked something I made. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna be using his style of music for the film and it's gonna be great, man. Um, also, we are in budget talks. I can't say a number yet because it would be really stupid to give a number and then um, for it to, what like, you know, get delayed dollars. or not work out. But no, definitely not a million dollars, but <laughs> definitely more than I... Right now, they're talking about more than I expected. So that's that's a really humbling thing to see. Um, I did a, another pass on the script, working on dialogue, adding a couple little scenes and stuff, and uh, it is 88 pages with the title page. So it's definitely going to be 90 to 100 minutes for sure. Um, I, it's officially listed as inspired by true events on, on like everything because it is. Um, I was talking to them I'm like, it, it's inspired by true events. And they're like, put that shit on there. That just helps, you know? Yeah. It gives it, it, gives it some uh, validity. So makes it seem like it's real personal, you know? So because it is. So like it shows that it's personal. But 
Uh, still working on the shot list. Oil Loco passed 86,000 views as of this morning. Uh, we're getting close to 100k. Theo got a new fish for 80k, and it's the coolest fish ever. Uh, it actually has like a personality. Um, I, I've got some really cool videos that I'll have to like share on social media at some point, but it like follows Theo's finger and it, he comes up to the glass and like swims happily and stuff. Total opposite of the last fish and honestly even cooler than Bluey. Theo said that. He's like, I like this fish better than Bluey and Bingo. And I'm like, well, Bingo, you didn't really... Yeah, bingo. Bro, died in like 72 hours. Um, we were supposed to go to Hooters for 90k. Theo's going to get a cheeseburger. I'm going to get some wings. Uh, and then for 100k, I am planning on releasing the screenplay. Like, I'm just going to like have it... I'm going to list it on like a screenplay website. And then people will be able to go read it. And like download it if they want to. So it's it's some of my first writing. So I'm like... I'm like, oh man, when I go back and look, how bad is it gonna be? What do you guys have a you know? blooper reel? Uh, no, we we we, it was a bit. It's because it's such a serious tone. There wasn't very many bloopers. Um, not only that, like I I think we were, we were very like precise when we recorded and stuff. Um, there's definitely gonna be bloopers for this feature because there's so much that we're gonna shoot. But no, I think there was so much at stake that everybody was kind of like. On their A-game. Taking it seriously, yeah, but, like, joking around behind the scenes. Um, we're still looking into getting uh, the audio-only versions of the podcast um, on Spotify and Apple. Um, I've been busy with meetings and stuff, so I haven't had a chance to do it, but I, I talked to Chris, and we were talking about a strategy for that, so it's coming. Uh, but under our main topic, uh, Congress has been popping off with these UFO hearings this past week. Uh, I think they started on the 13th, and I saw one happening yesterday, so it's they're still revealing stuff. Um, they're saying that they have made contact with non-human entities, bio non-human biological well, entities, which uh, is a weird way to look I for. didn't hear that part. Are, are, yeah. Are, like, they're saying they've... What the heck is happening, dude? Everybody's saying Project Bluebeam, which is real conspiracy-like. Well, but... Yeah, and, and... Okay, I mean... We're gonna get into conspiracy corner here, but like, uh, that's that's the thing, dude. I I really do think that there's something to it because it seems like every time that there is crazy stuff going on in the world, they do some stuff like this. Right now, the big thing is the the stuff that's happening with Russia and Ukraine. So, um, so I they're I mean they've been saying it for a long time, but a lot of people said that this like that the what they just did, what Russia just did, could have marked. Like when they go back and look in the history books, if there's if this turns into World War Three, they're gonna be like, that's when it started. Yeah. So, it's it's scary, man. Yeah, cause I I get it. Like you don't want to cause like mass panic because you're like, oh my god, the world's gonna end and the stock market crashes and stuff like that, and people start you know shooting each other and stuff. But um, the the UFO stuff is is crazy because like the pictures that that I was seeing. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. It, it, it's would, like so. They're would, in we, they're in the ocean, man. They're in the ocean. The topic, yeah, the topic is is uh UFOs in the ocean. Um, the the Navy released a bunch of photos of these things, and like all the pictures are so similar, man. I mean, there's a couple where it's like really weird shaped aircraft, yeah. where they're like triangle shaped, but most of them are that like the pill. stereotypical pill cigar shaped saucer. And they all look like they're either coming out of the water or diving in. And, uh, it, I mean, it is straight and out of a science fiction movie. It's crazy. That's the thing. The, the ocean part is what freaks me out because I, I don't, I swear I had seen it in like at least two different, like, um, like videos from, uh, it was it, was it David Fravor? Is that what his name was? Sounds well, like, it, yeah, yeah. The, the pilot, right? Yeah. I, yeah. So I think one of the videos that I had seen that that was from him, it was like it was in it was in the sky and then it it like changed altitude like really fast and they were like what the heck happened and then it goes straight into the water right and so yeah. it's like the fact that that's continuing it's like oh like there's a pattern here and that's it's like a really weird one like one that yeah. it makes sense well, if you think about it but it's like we it's like I, the exact opposite of what we would expect. I had mentioned to you that there's people on TikTok who are saying their theory is that aliens are here and they're in the ocean because we don't we don't go in the ocean 
You know, like a very small amount of people dive and stuff like that. But I mean, besides like submarines and shit, we don't know what's down there and 70% of the earth or something like that is water. So it's like, they could be coexisting here with us living in the ocean and we wouldn't even know it because we don't, we don't go that far out in the ocean. Like, dude, when I was on the Coast Guard and we would go on missions out there, there would be nobody for hundreds of miles, man. Like, it's just, there's nobody out there. And we weren't even that far out. Like, you can go even farther. You know what I mean? Like, it is crazy how much of the Earth is just unpopulated. But obviously, it's because you can't live out in the ocean. We're just, I mean, you look at, like, movies from the 90s and stuff, and they have, like, underwater bases and stuff. Or, like, Bioshock. Which is probably true. We probably have some underwater stuff like that, but not much. And we definitely ain't covering that much ocean. Yeah. You know, like, um... And the, the ocean is so deep in spots where it's like, we can't even get radar in that bitch, you know? So it's like, dude, I mean, who knows, man? All I know is that it's like you said, it's really weird. It seems like whenever something like this happens, it's just like a massive wave of all this stuff, almost like a distraction. Like a lot of people are saying Project Bluebeam, which if people listening to this don't know what that is, it's this conspiracy theory that's been around for a... I, I, I remember hearing Project Bluebeam when I was in like middle school, man. Like, it has been a thing for a long time. People are saying that the CIA had documents that were, like, either declassified or something like that, and they talked about this thing called Project Bluebeam, and people did a deep dive, and basically it's this idea that the, the, the government would fake a UFO invasion, and, like, they could use our own drones or whatever, and basically it's like, you just see on the news, like, holy shit, we're, like, shooting aircraft out of the sky, stuff like that. And um, the whole world is going to freak out. And so they'll basically be able to use that to, like, pass laws or um, declare martial law or... I think, like, uh, that's... People the, go the... as far as, like, a one-world government, yeah. but that seems like a stretch to me, man. I just I, don't see I that. actually... Unless I think... It was, like, UN who led it or yeah, something. Yeah, if it was, if it was like, the UN or something like that. Because if you think about it, right, um, I think... God, was it, was it with JFK or Ronald Reagan? There was... It, I, Whenever I think Gorbachev was, uh, so it was Reagan. Um, what I think they were, they were, they were quoted as like, if there, if there was ever uh, an alien attack on on the Earth, that um, the U.S. and the USSR would like join forces to fight against it. And I was like, whoa, like, and and that was like a, a serious thing. It was like. You know they they were going to put their differences aside and like protect humanity i mean people I like, say wow. all the time that 9 11 was like the last time that that the whole nation felt unified you know when yeah. something like that happens everybody puts their differences aside and bands together and so they're saying like this would be uh a what like a new world order strategy to get the whole world to basically unite you know, I, I, and then they can control everyone under one government. But I also hate that. It term. seems like such a stretch. I well, I, what I hate is that people talk about like, oh, new world order, all this stuff like that. It's like, bro, it, people care way too much about themselves and money and all that stuff to to get together like that and pull something off on that scale. I just don't see well, it. Ever also, happening, new but... new world order does not mean like, oh man, like you know, they're taking over the world. It, New World Order is like it's order as in like um like order versus chaos kind of a thing. Yeah, like, one that's... like unified government that no, no, controls no, no, everything. No, 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 no. But people think that's what it means. Order is it's like like not necessarily. No, like I mean peace. when JFK re when JFK mentioned New World Order in one of his speeches and said one unified government, which is like a danger because of communism and all that stuff. You know, like what if it's a communist government? Um. It's, I don't know. I mean, it, it, that gets into Illuminati stuff, you know? Oh, dude, have I told you that, like, on my way to work, I see freaking Freemason stickers on people's bumpers and stuff? It's weird, man. Like, I like I, I don't know why it's so common here. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I will see, like, the Freemason, like, like the compass thing a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it's, it's, like, you know, it's yeah. They picked such a baller name, the Freemasons. That's like well, such a. <laughs> but they've it's been around for, I think since like the formation of the United States. I think like it's been around for a long it, time. It sounds like some Skyrim shit, like the Freemasons. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's I think it's a cool name, and the logo is very like when you see it, you're like, oh, I know what that is. But 
I'm like, it seems how? like there's like, yeah, why, it's, it's, how are they like there's evil that? intentions or something? But. Yeah, I mean, because the Freemasons that that's a real thing. Yeah, the yeah, Freemasons it, it, are it's, real. It's not necessarily like they're the Illuminati or anything. It's which also yeah. the the Illuminati. I haven't heard that term very much lately, but I think everyone's just kind of like, ah, oh, it's not real. But um, like, well, I I hear the term. Um, what's it called? Uh, I I can't remember what they call it. It's like um. It's at, not embarrassment ritual. Humiliation? Um, humiliation ritual, yeah. I hear that a lot. Like, anytime something embarrassing happens to a celebrity and it's all over the news, they're like, oh, that was their oh, like the, humiliation the ritual. Taylor Swift, to, Kanye to thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you finish, but that, that, yeah. Man. I don't know, man. Either way, I, I part of me really wants to believe the UFO stuff, but also, like, those pictures are some of the craziest Dude, shit I've ever seen. And the thing is, it's not it's not like the same quality in every picture. So no, it's like, like black, like black and white through a like a periscope. Yeah. There's clear as day. There's like older, grainier looking. But like I said, they some of them are so similar where I'm like, dude, <laughs> like. Well, there's the it's, one. It's almost like if, but there, it, it's almost like if they. I, I think if they were. If they were doctoring photos and it was like, okay, these need to be similar, like I think I, I don't think it would be hard to to make them not exact. And they're not yeah. exact, but they're they're it, it obviously looks like the same kind of aircraft, just so, different angles. The stuff. only one that was weird is there's one where it's like a giant triangle looking thing in the sky, and you're like, this looks like something out of Star Wars. And I'm like, it yeah, looks like that damn thing that comes in and then drops the thing with the the droids in like the first one. It's like a Phantom Menace. It's um. I don't know, man, because you know, you know what it like. It's like, like a bomber. It, yeah, it's it's very strange to me. It's like the designs that we have for for aircraft now, like a lot of them are going for that triangle shape. Like they're trying to get further and further well, away. It's aerodynamic, from, right? Yes, but like there's a certain. It's like the sharp triangle shape. Like if you look at like a like a, an F sixteen or something like that, like that stuff is not quite like well, just a triangle. Yeah. This is like literally just a straight up triangle that they're getting at this point, right? And if if you look at like more modern aircraft like like the really like the cutting edge stuff right they're getting closer to that and with this stuff it's like th they're doing the same thing whoever's making it it's like they're they're using the same techniques that we are but it's like they're probably better at it right so it's yeah. just weird seeing like there's similarities but it's like okay are are we taking inspiration from that or is it just that's the point that you get to when you get so far ahead in technology? Like, what well, what is they, the cause of that? When they talk about, like, oh, is it our aircraft or is it another country's aircraft? Are they, like, drones of some sort that we have that's just not declassified because that's how it is, you know? Like, you don't, like, they don't acknowledge, like, military technology and stuff like that exists until, like, 20 years later when it's obsolete. Um I think it's usually because like, I mean, you look like at 60. Look, look at the the stealth. No, the stealth bomber. I remember that the people were freaking out in the 90s because they were like, "What the hell is that?" And then like early 2000s, they're like, "Oh yeah, that's our stealth bomber." I don't think they. I, oh well, it, it's. A, I thought that was made in the 60s though, so it's like at least 40 years, right? No, 60s is. I mean, we're still talking about the um, the SR 71 and stuff. That was like cutting edge. Yeah, the SR-71 looks sick, by the way. That is one of, it's, to this day, people still acknowledge the SR-71 as, like, the coolest military aircraft well, ever Well, have made. you seen the SR-72? That's a thing. The, the, it's the freaking Dark Star from Top Gun 2. It's, like, real. Wait, like, you, watch, you watch Top Gun 2? No, but I know about the, the freaking Dark Star. But I saw the whole thing. I did not know that. The, the SR-72 SR is, is, uh, is real. They, they were acknowledging it. Um... So Lockheed Martin actually like got rid of all the stuff on their web pages about it. So they used to be very proud of it, but after all the tensions got weird between us and China, they started removing all of it because they didn't want China copying all of it. But it's I think it's like a hyper or they're trying to do like a hypersonic Mach drone uh, that can. How fast is Mox? Forty one hundred miles per hour. You're I, telling me it could fly from one end of the country to the other in an hour? It's, I believe so. It's hypersonic. Less than an hour. I think. I think it's like thirty five or thirty eight hundred miles from one coast the, to the, the other. The thing is, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a drone. Oh. I'm pretty sure it's a drone. So that's why they're able to go that fast. But 
That's true, because that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, I mean, we're t how many Gs are we talking? I don't know. But they're saying know. that makes it twice as fast as the SR-71 Black. So, and I will say, I they don't, they have not said whether or not it's in, it, whether or not it's in production, right? Uh, the thing that I had seen was that it, Lockheed acknowledged that they do low volume production, which well, basically means they have stuff that they don't make a lot of, right? So it could be stuff that's like, prototypes or better yet like they have like maybe three sr-72s that have been made and they're maintaining them or whatever right but like dang man like that well, whoever's I, I, using like that said, thing must I'm be like gonna, so stoked i'm not gonna say where because I, I i don't want to get my ass in trouble but those, i saw those stealth blackhawks that they say don't exist that they use during the bin laden raid they are still using those things um you know what I'm talking about? Or it looks almost like an origami Blackhawk because it's all like... No. Well, they don't, I assume they I, don't have pictures. Stealth Blackhawk. Stealth and it's Black it's Hawk. like the... They're, they're literally silent, dude. You just hear like a little thump, thump, thump. Oh! Thump. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. I've, I've seen two of them. I saw two of them flying next to each other on a base this is this is a there's like literal like pictures though like, like people standing they in used, front of them so yeah, like they used these during the bin laden raid and one of them crashed See, i can't remember why so for, for the people who can't look it up it right now like wind or something so think of like a helicopter you know how it's kind of it's got like some some round edges and stuff like that with this it's like everything is a sharp edge sort of like how they do yeah. stealth bombers right so um that's a cool looking helicopter though, dude. Yeah, I think it's really cool too. I think it's a cool helicopter, but um, apparently they're super heavy. They can't fly as far, and it makes sense. Um, but I mean, they're, they're they're supposed to be like immune to radar, and I mean, like I said, it was crazy. They have these special blade tips to make them super quiet. Yeah, well, so is, you know the story with with the um, like when they first were testing out like stealth technology as far as like like being hidden from radar. So they they put a model of I don't know if it was it the is it the Spirit I don't know, whichever whichever was like the first like stealth bomber right they had like a model of it up on like a I don't know not, not not like a pedestal but like they had had it mounted somewhere right and they're pointing stuff at it to see if they can find it on radar right and they're like we don't see this thing and they finally got a hit and they go ah oh, man like it's it's not immune to radar and they look up and realize there's a bird on it and that's what was getting the hit. So they were like, "Holy crap! This thing is invisible. Like you That's can't, crazy. you can't see it all." So this freaking bird was how they found out that yeah, it it works. So the dude being on that team must have been so cool. Yeah. Like I, w I would love to to work on something like that and be be in the development process of a technology that like is just like I said, like the like the bleeding edge. You know, like it's just oh. Well, moving on from UFO talk, uh, you had 2.5 Russian Ukraine starting World War Three. I don't know if you want to go into more detail about that. So I, I did not end up looking it up last night. I've uh, only seen headlines. That's the thing. So I, I I haven't heard much about it since. But the the big headline was that Russia used ICBMs uh, in Dnipro in Ukraine. And uh, so did they have a payload, or was it just a show of like? What, what they can do like it was like a flex I, like hey we can do this and you guys are fucked i believe they had a payload but it wasn't a nuclear payload but the the main thing that russia was saying was like hey the west can't stop these like they they go too fast for them to, to do anything about them because we didn't take them out right but also like we aren't over there like we aren't literally setting up defense systems like right there to take care of icbms because we weren't expecting to deal with that Called um, an IRBM. It was an IRBM, interregional, inter intermediate range. Well, uh, this has been warned the U.S. thirty minutes before the launch that its new Oreshnik missile against targets. Let me see. Because if you look at Russia, US, used Ukraine's ICBM. military was ninety-five percent sure the strike on Thursday was with an ICBM. So I'm, here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing two things. I'm seeing ICBM and I'm also seeing hypersonic IRBM. Both Either are way, scary. There, um, I would like to emphasize once again that it was not Russia, but the United States that destroyed the international security system by continuing to fight, cling to their... Oh, uh, that's just, that's just like propaganda. Um, well, they're, they're talking about like... 
Uh, an hour is just announcing it had struck down five of the student enemies. Doctor. Either way, the thing that's scary about ten it. Ten of those missiles. They shot ten of them. The thing that's scary about it is it's there. It was basically them saying, "Hey, it's like um, there was a thing that that snipers used to do, where they would they would be seeing somebody, right, and then they wouldn't fire at another sniper, right? And what they would do is they would put a bullet where they were at, where they were hiding at, and then then they would leave. And so when the snipers would get to that next point, they would see the bullet and they would go, "Oh crap, that person could have shot, shot me, and they me, didn't." Yeah. Me. So. It's the same thing where it's like, hey, we could have nuked you guys, like, and you wouldn't have been able to do anything about it, but we didn't. Except they actually bombed the place. So the... Yeah, but nuking is a lot different from bombing. Yes, but people are still killed. Like, I, it's not the same thing. It, but... It's definitely not the same thing because, like, if, if it... they shot ten of them. It, it sounds more like they were, they were, they were. It was almost like a test, also flexing and like warning. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of different motivations behind it, but. Overall, Anyways, I mean, I it's it's escalating and yeah. uh, it's it's no bueno. So yeah, but we'll see what happens with that. I I don't know what'll happen next. I don't know if they keep using them or if it's just like I mean, it's possible that's the only ten that Russia had, and they're bluffing. That'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyways, I'll do our quick ad break. Support us with Patreon. We, we got, like, 30 members in there strong. It's great. We just played... There was, like, seven of us who were playing 10v10 yeah. Mosh Pit. Well, I, th I think... Which is a terrible game mode, by the way. And you guys you guys were still playing it after I left, or what? No, no. We moved to, like, regular hardcore yeah, dumping and I, stuff. Yeah, because I couldn't... The ten, it was hard was to get rough. kills. Uh, we actually had, like, um, eight, but it was, like, people were, were leaving and then joining and stuff like that. But we, we, yeah. had, we had a pretty decent-sized party in there, yeah. It was popping. Uh, there's all kinds of benefits. I'm going to be doing a special giveaway for Thanksgiving next week. Um, join if you want a chance at winning something. Uh, use G Fuel code Danny D, by the way. They just dropped a new Hidden Blade flavor inspired by Assassin's Creed. Haven't tried it yet, but it's supposed to taste like Sangria, so I'm excited what about that. What is that Sangria? Um, it's, like a, it's like a mixed drink with, with wine. Mm. So... Um, it's good. Uh, I'm curious to see if it tastes anything like it. I mean, obviously, it's not going to taste like alcohol, but, um, what else was I going to say? Oh, they just announced the Poppy's Playtime flavor. That's cool. Um, it's, uh, something raspberry? Let me look it up. <laughs> it's they, raspberry. They've been doing a, I, I've noticed... <laughs> I've noticed that G Fuel will do a lot of similar flavors, so like everything's like raspberry right now. Uh, the Assassin's Creed Collector's Box is almost gone, by the way. Oh. If you wanted to get that. Uh, so they announced a peach raspberry flavor. Uh, they got strawberry matcha still coming. That's still up for pre-order. Uh, they brought back White Elephant. And let me see here. Coming soon. Poppy's Playtime is Raspberry Apple. That sounds good. Oh, wow. So we got raspberry apple, peach raspberry, strawberry matcha, and sangria. Those are the new flavors. Uh, Poppy's Playtime looks like it drops on the 24th. Oh, Ships February, that's, that's... so pre-orders go up on the 24th. So yeah, the, the, so if if you guys are watching this on YouTube, it'll it'll be going up for pre-order to, the, the, today. Um, yeah, yeah. If you're on it'll Patreon, it's up. tomorrow. But uh, cool. Um, Use code Danny D. For twenty to thirty percent off, thirty percent off those pre-orders. Is Nemesis T still still up? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Nemesis T. That is like one hundred percent. Like if you if you're like I want something that is like oh, kind of you. kind of mild. Yeah. Like dude, just get that. It's it's so freaking good. It's oh my god, dude. I love Nemesis. Also, <laughs> use code Danny D for ten percent off Fit Butters. Uh, they got a new. Um. Sorry, the dog's barking. Um, they got a new um. <laughs> Why is the dog barking? I can't Choc hear it, so you're good. It's really loud for me. Chocolate dirt cake. Um, Fit Butters is dropping for Black Friday. So Danny D for ten percent off. I love Fit Butters. I I've been mixing it into my Ninja Creamy. Um, Ooh. when I make protein ice cream, so now it's like a nutty protein ice cream it's really good and also you know whatever is mixed into it makes it taste like that too um 
The Ninja Creamy is awesome, by the way. Uh, definitely worth the investment. It, that thing is two fifty, like brand new, and we got it for one eighty at Costco. So, hell yeah, Dude. Black Friday deal. Um, oh, man. Oh. it can make slushies. It can make um sorbet so uh, with with yogurt the, with the ice cream can, can it do like um like what how, what is the the consistency like like ice cream but is it like soft serve or is it like ice cream it's like you went to baskin robbins and got scoops of ice cream oh I, I i want i want some soft serve bro soft serve is like oh well ah. soft serve is chemicals Okay, well, I'm the same guy that likes the cheese out of the the Jack Link's like beef and cheese sticks. So, yeah, but I'm just saying, like soft serve, like that. I mean, you got to buy like a special machine for that, like a soft serve ice cream machine. And There's then, no like, way you gotta, it's, it's all chemically. You really, do you think it's, so? It's a mixture that they put in, and then they add the milk and all that stuff, and the machine. Like it's it's the same process of making a milkshake, except that it's a different machine. I feel scammed. So. It's, I mean, it's good. I mean, <laughs> it's good. I get what you mean. But, um, anyways, speaking of Fit Butters, uh, I tried the carrot cake flavor and it was delicious, dude. Well, have you ever had actual carrot yeah. cake? Yeah, and I'm not really a fan of it, but this was like, it tasted like cake. Uh, it didn't taste like carrot or anything like that, like super strong. Like, it tasted like a really good cake. And there's uh, glazed walnuts in there too, Ooh. so it it's it's, I think it's like, it's up there with uh, banana maple French toast for me. Like it is a deluxe <sighs> flavor. So I yeah. recommend banana maple French toast, carrot cake, rookie, um, the fruity pebbles flavors are both great. Well, I, I know wrong. I know what I want for Christmas then. Give me some carrot cake, fit butters, and some Nemesis TG fuel, and we're we're good <laughs> uh that sign was your bir was your birthday christmas present no man no <laughs> I, I want nemesis tea and carrot cake um under our patreon question sorry i got <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> carrot cake is so good uh lost in the carrot yeah, cake yeah join the patreon if you want access to these benefits one of them uh is you can ask a question and we'll answer it on the show so tommy so a lot of these are really quick ones too this week tommy says uh what's a movie quote that you find yourself saying all the time Ooh, i'm about to make a name for myself so, uh the one that i that isn't that the one that i say a lot is uh the <laughs> gorlami gorlami that's uh that's a classic that's from yeah. uh inglorious yeah. bastards please go watch that movie it's great uh um, i it that's like one of my least favorite Tarantino movies. I what's the what's the one that's um about the the car? That's the one that I don't like. Death Proof. Death. I hate that movie. Why do you hate it? It what, what was the point of it, dude? That movie literally went nowhere. Um, it, they're stunt people, right? It's ridiculous. It's over the top because it's supposed to be like a '70s grindhouse double feature, so it has that feel. But I love Kurt Russell in it. Um, I think the first half is definitely better than the second half. There is a, uh, a... So, for people who don't know, Death Proof is one of Tarantino's movies. A lot of people say it's um, their least favorite. A lot of people have been shitting on Jackie Brown lately, and I think they're smoking something. That's based off a book. Jackie that Brown. is a good movie. That's a good movie. It's It's got a... Next to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I would say it has the most hangout vibe. Um, anyways, Death Proof... Kurt Russell plays a serial killer who is a stunt driver. And so the way that he kills people is he has his muscle car that is basically made to withstand like crazy car accidents for the stunts. And what he's doing is crashing into people at high speeds and killing them. That's, that's his serial killer method. Um, so he'll just go to the hospital, he'll get out and do it again. Um, and, uh, so there is like some really crazy car accidents in it and it's 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 pretty over the top for a Tar Tarantino movie and that's saying a lot but it's cuz he was I mean literally the other movie is called Grind or Planet Terror and the lady has like a machine gun leg so it's it's matching that vibe. Yeah, but okay. 
the concept is not bad. I think the execution just sucks because I think the dialogue's great. I no, think the dialogue's not not bad. It's just it just like, gets really ridiculous towards the end because they're just like beating the shit out of them. Well, but, it's, it's, well, I mean, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it. But anyway, so, um, I, I my thing was it was just like that was it. That's really entertaining. It. I just I, I would like... rather watch Death Proof again than Kill Bill Volume Two. I... Kill Bill Volume Two is like the complete opposite of the first one. It's super slow. I haven't seen Kill Bill. Um, the first one's really good. I don't know. I I think I think he cheats by considering them one movie. I I, I still think Death Proof is like the worst one, for sure. The other ones that I've seen. Um, either way, Gorlami, Gorlami. Well. <sighs> I, because I've seen all of his movies now. I've seen. Well, I never finished from dusk till dawn, because the second half turns because the, it turns into a vampire movie in the second half, and it's just like stupid. Oh, but the first half is like a crime kidnap movie. Like they're going to Mexico and kidnapping a family. It's crazy. Um, so like it just feels like two movies put together, and the, the first movie is like ten times better than the second movie. Uh, Bris of Our Dogs obviously is fantastic anyways we got sidetracked <laughs> movie movie quotes um there's so many man we're gonna I mean, need a bigger boat yeah but but they, they, you say all the time and i'm i don't say a quote all the time it's like whatever is like popular at the moment or you know we're talking about a specific movie no, so. anytime I don't someone have, says something about if someone says something about italians i'll be like gorlami like every single time dude because okay, right, it's Chris just has one I don't. <laughs> Super Dude Zero One says, "What's your favorite TV show theme song?" Uh, season one of True Detective is my favorite. Um, honestly, probably the the Malcolm in the Middle theme song. That's a good one. That's because that one, like, it's just a good better call. Saul's got a good theme. Yeah, but it's kind of a meme. Yeah, but. I still like it. Um, it fits the vibe of the show so I, well. I, you know, I can't stand the Walking Dead theme song. I can see why. Um, well, I mean, they don't really do theme songs for a lot of shows now, do they? Um, no, they do. Does it's the, just everybody skips them because they have a skip intro button. Does so. did, did the the because the boys doesn't really have one, does it? They don't really have like a like an intro, do they? No, the boys doesn't have an intro. That's true. They don't have a theme song. I think I think The Last of Us did, but it was mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was like know. Game of Thrones almost. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, season one True Detective. Tyler asks, do either of you believe in ghosts slash demons, etc. And have you ever had an encounter with one or a time you thought you did? Um, I, I I'm agnostic about ghosts and demons. Like I think there's something, but I don't know if it's like ghosts, demons. You know, I. I've had one experience that I can't ex- two two experiences at the same place that I can't explain. So uh, our grandma on our stepfather's side had, used to own a house that was like super old wooden house um, that lived that that's like next to the old train track in our hometown. And so people would stay at this place. It was like a like a lodge almost, or like a it was a place people, the workers would stay. And so. They say a lot of people died working on the railroad right there and stuff like that. And so it's haunted. And I didn't believe it. And then one day we were there for like Thanksgiving and my cousin had a bathroom in his room. Our cousin lived with our grandma. And uh, I, I remember everybody was in the living room. Like everybody was in there. And we were like waiting for food to be ready. And I thought somebody was messing with me because the 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 door handle kept rattling while I was wa- like going to the I was trying to take a piss and wash my hands and then the door opened and I was like I thought I locked that door and it opens and nobody's there and I literally came out and was like is some like who 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 opened the door you know I was like it had to be like Justin or somebody who like knows where like the key is or whatever you know how like some doors you can use a little thing and mm-hmm. open it and everybody was like, no, it wasn't me. Um, second thing that happened there, I stayed the night, and my cousin and I were just playing video games all night. Our cousin. Uh, playing video games all night, and uh, the dog was in our room. It was a, a boxer. 
and um super chill dog and i want to say it's like three in the morning and all of a sudden we hear these loud footsteps like somebody's walking with heavy feet and it's an old wooden house so you hear the creaking real creepy sounding and we both pause the game we're playing and we're like uh and it stops at his door and then the dog starts growling and looking at the ceiling and we just sat there like frozen for like 30 seconds while it happened and then the dog stopped and we went back to play video games but it, we were like too scared to talk about it and the next morning um uh, our grandma would always make like waffles right and so we're like all excited go out there and she goes who set the table and i'm like what and the table was set for like four people there's only three of us and she said i came out this morning and the table was set she had to have been messing with you guys dude i swear to god she dude, had to have been messing with we, you. okay we went back out to get snacks right uh-huh like i don't know 20 30 minutes after the foot stomping thing happened and she was snoring in her room like we checked she was sound asleep but that's the only explanation she was messing with us but she was also very superstitious so i don't know if she would do that and why would the dog growl at her well i mean the same reason that you guys would be like freaked out because you're hearing loud noises the door was open by the way that changes things the door was open we hear the footsteps yeah we hear the footsteps doors open it sounds like they stop at the door the dog starts growling and then starts looking at the ceiling and growling more and then stops and like the dog gets down and starts like sniffing around and we're just like uh go back to video games <laughs> yeah i don't know i see so i don't really we believe... afraid to go out there for like like i said like 20 30 minutes and i'm like he was like should i should i see if like she's awake and what are we doing she was snoring i don't i don't he, really... he opened the door and i could hear her snoring I don't really believe in ghosts, but the only experience that I've had is, and I remember the, the, the explanation that I got for it was so strange, but it, I mean, it, there's no way this guy could have known. So, uh, it was like middle school, I think seventh grade. And I remember I was, I was drinking a lot of the, uh, it was like a, like the G zero or whatever, um, which was, it was like the zero sugar Gatorade. And it was just like light blue color right um and i was drinking them like crazy right I freaking, do? I, well they uh, they i think so but they changed the branding for it recently i think so i think it's g0 now or something yeah but back then it was probably it was for g2 back yeah. then anyway it's just so, like a lower sugar version it, either way it was this stuff i was like addicted to it, i hated right? that stuff <laughs> i thought it was great um uh, so i was drinking this all the time and then uh i remember um like and, this is, and just give you some context. So then I I, uh, I remember I, I was like laying in bed one night and it was just like really freaking cold, right? And so uh, I'm kind of like under the blankets, just, just trying to stay warm. And then it started to feel like there was like a, a massive gust of wind in my bedroom. And I, I was like, wait, what? where? It, this is in my bedroom. Like what the hell? no, like the window wasn't open or anything, right? And it was like it went on for like ten seconds. Like it was like really just really long, right? And uh, and then it it I, I kid you not, it was so weird. Like I thought I heard the freaking uh, the the balloon boy from from Five Minutes at Freddy's two. <laughs> I swear I thought I heard like hello. I was like <laughs> I was like what? The? And so. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, just, I, I just, remember you telling me this. I, I, I was like, literally just, I just like froze. I was like, I'm not, I'm not moving. And then like, finally, after like 15 minutes, I finally like moved the blanket and look around and there's nothing going on. Right. And like I said, the wind stopped after like 10 seconds. Right. Just like the most random thing ever happened. Right. And I'm like, this is odd. Right. And I think I finally fell asleep at like two in the morning. Like it took me a while to go to sleep. 
And the next day, I, I tell one of my friends at school, and he goes, have you been drinking a lot of Gatorade? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, that's that's what that is. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand how you knew that, but okay. Like, it was just the fact that he knew that was what freaked me out because I'm like, I don't see how there's a correlation there, but he also, like, he made that connection immediately. And I wasn't drinking it at school. I was only drinking it at home because I would get, like, three bottles of it and just chug it throughout the day. Uh, the Discord is, like, blowing up right now. I don't know why people are, like, sending gifts or something at each other. Um, by the way, like, that's my only experience, but I don't know if that was a ghost thing or if it was literally, like, something okay, with G2. Okay, this, this, is, this is my theory. I think that, what do they, they say energy or matter is not created nor destroyed, right? So when people die, whatever energy that's in your body that's responsible for your soul or whatever you want to call it, it's got to go somewhere. Um, there's also the theory that, like, um, bad, like, bad things can almost leave, like, an imprint you know, so like if there's a lot of trauma or there's like, you know, people murdered and stuff like that, those places just feel like there's bad energy there. So who knows, man. What but would you, what would I you just, do? It, it, there's humans that have been around for so long that I feel like if, if ghosts were a real thing, they'd be everywhere. There's, it just doesn't make yeah, any sense. But, so if, if you were, if you had to be a ghost and haunt a place, what would you do? What would your thing be? I don't know. I know what I would do. I would be in bathrooms and I would just like make a fart noise that echoes like super loud. <laughs> Damn, so someone goes in there by themselves and these years they hear a fart and they're like, what the? <laughs> like, who's someone in here? Hell no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Tyler, I hope that answered your question. I think we're going to call this episode Ocean UFOs and Ghost Encounters or something. Yeah. Uh, Pabu says, favorite food of all time. Um, I think we've We've, nachos i feel like we've answered this recently um the lasagna frito from from olive garden that's yours i like yeah. nachos like that's i just love nachos when i go sometimes when i go to chipotle i make my own nachos i love nachos so much uh there's a place called Federico's here which is like filiberto's kind of mm. except we have Filiberto, filiberto's here but filiberto's here sucks they have like bad the fries aren't as good like they use different fries and stuff it's just not the same um, but anyways, um, Pedrico's has super nachos. Oh my God. Like a 10 pound thing of nachos for like so 10 bucks. I'm going to open up a place. I'm going to make super duper nachos. Sushi nacho, nachos. Oh, like, oh, wait. Oh, you're just, you're thinking of a concept like sushi yeah. nachos. That sounds disgusting. I mean, pokey nachos, but the, I don't know. Po so poke is like, it, it, they have like all the ingredients of sushi but then you like put it in a bowl almost like you're at Chipotle. And uh I every time I've had poke bowl, I feel like the fish is like kinda like flaky, um, like frozen. You I, know what I mean? Like I, I think it just tastes old. Raw fish and like hot nacho cheese are, are not a great combo. That sounds disgusting. I dude, I I've had a sushi burrito before, it was delicious delicious i don't want to think about that anyways um what's the, what's the next a lot of people are listening it's like damn that sounds good uh, you know um, what that's that's the thing i want i want in the comments i want to know if you guys think that sushi nachos sounds good or not do you guys think it sounds good do you guys think it sounds gross please tell us why because i think it sounds disgusting i think it sounds delicious uh taboo also asks i'm a 17 year old and i want to be an actor one day any tips to help me out i just released a video uh, sponsored by Backstage, um, about how to be an actor. So go check that out. It's literally got all the information about how to start. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> how to be an actor in 2024. Uh, Mr. Knight 777 says, if you could have one thing on the hall word, what will it be? I have no I idea. Think, what I means. think they mean whole world. In the whole world. If you world. could have one thing in the whole world, what will it be? For, for you to. Properly worded question. <laughs> um, Nikki asks. Hey, I didn't get to answer <laughs> that, man. Um, dude, I would. I okay. So it's, it's something that already exists, right? It has to be something that already exists. So I money would, to make a movie. <laughs> dude, I would say like a freaking uh, 
I'd love to have like a a, a metal 3D printer. Oh. That'd be sick, man. No, but I'm <laughs> like like seriously, could you imagine something you could make with that, man? Oh. Yeah, that'd be wild. That's what I want. Is that a thing? Is that even possible? Yeah, they exist, man. But they do they use them to make like freaking rockets. There's a there's a company that does that. Crazy. Anyways, that's what I what I want. Okay. Yeah, money to make a movie. Nikki asks, how are you guys feeling about COD after a month into playing the game and how is ranked? So I played one match of ranked last night and my teammates were ass, but we lost like three to one um uh in control. Which is a fun game mode, but it's so frustrating. Um so I don't have a whole lot to say about ranked yet. Like I, I, I don't even have a rank. Um I would like to at least hit gold so I can get this the gold stuff that comes with it. But um as far as how I feel about the game after a month, I, I'm addicted hundred percent. I find myself hopping into zombies and like saving and quitting and coming back later. Like I literally like play zombies to de stress. Um it is it, the I, I still stand by it. I think it's my favorite Call of Duty since Black Ops too. I'm loving it. It's um it's actually like kind of frustrating how much I like the game just because it's like now if I go and play a different game just for like five minutes I'm like, dude, I'm like wasting my time because like Yeah, why not just play Call of Duty? <laughs> yeah, like and it's like oh the battle I, 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 ha I have the battle pass that I can be getting progress for, you know? And um I don't know. It's not very buggy. Like I'm like surprisingly, my experience with it has been very smooth compared to other Call of Duty. Yes, but there there definitely are bugs. They update stuff and it introduces bugs, but in terms of like launch day and how it was and everything like that, smoothest experience. Well, I've ever had I don't know. Long. I guess there was a Dark Ops challenge that like just recently got fixed, where it was like get every gun out of the box. In There's one match. always stuff like that, but yeah. But oh, uh, that's crazy. I didn't know that was a challenge. Yeah. Um. I. I love it. I, I, think, I think it's, it's very like stable. Out of 10. It's very. I think stable it's like an eight game. out of ten Call of Duty. Um, eight. Mm -hmm. I I give it more like a nine, dude. Well, tell me what's wrong with it. Tell me what's wrong with the game. What's wrong with the game? Yeah. Um, I think the maps aren't that great. That's fair. Multiplayer, like that's definitely one of the weakest points. I still haven't finished the campaign, so I think the campaign is solid, but it's it's still not as good as the old days. Um, I think zombies is the best thing about it. I think zombies is what brings it up to an eight for me. Like it would otherwise be like a six, but zombies brings it up. I think I think the maps that suck in that game are the big maps. I I think the small maps are really where that game shines. Like stakeout, dude. That 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 map is it's so. It's <laughs> yeah, but it's shipment with like, I guess more it's chaos. An interesting yeah, it's an interesting layout. I will say that. You know, you got the balconies, the hallway, you got the kitchen area. There's like that little vent. And walls. Yeah. Yeah. There's that one courtyard area that you can just jump across. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, and then and then there's uh, like those balconies that people will camp on. So that's the most, I hate spawning on the balcony and getting shot immediately. Yeah. But I I, I think um, that the the like face off maps are like probably the I haven't gotten Babylon in like a decade, bro. It's uh, that, yeah, they removed like that the map. Purpose, they didn't remove it, but I feel like they're purposely like it's not as likely to, to land on which is because I, I do. If they had a Babylon twenty four seven, I'd play it all the time. Yeah, I love Babylon. I would take that over Nuketown, honestly. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Yes, I love Nuketown, but Babylon is. I mean, it's just the way that it's laid out. Like you get so many kills. It's like the perfect size. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Two quick asks. For our last question, favorite movie soundtrack. I feel like we answered this recently. Mine's Drive. I we did answer this recently, I think, and I forgot yeah. my answer. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Drive. I I want to say. Uh, well, okay. So if we're talking about original soundtrack, it's to me be the, soundtrack is like it's got licensed songs. At least licensed that's how it's songs. in the filmmaking world. A soundtrack is licensed music that's paid for to use in the film, and a score is music that's composed specifically for that film. Well, because you have like a so video. When I, see, when I see favorite movie soundtrack, I'm thinking, oh, okay, so like 
Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, because like, you know. De- Deadpool Wolverine was, I think it might have been my answer. It might have been. Um, but so I, I didn't even think about it. Freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. That's that's Everyone. yeah. I was like, oh, like they that was kind of the thing. Like they they actually have playlists on Spotify just because of how good the the, the song choice was in that. Yep. So that might actually if if I'm gonna change my answer from what it was before, <laughs> then that's probably it. Like from like every single time the Guardians of the Galaxy have, have appeared in the MCU because they also have like um they're like deleted scenes from. Endgame or, or Infinity War or whatever that um that actually had songs that I I was like oh this is good so mm. um that's my answer uh I had it as our next topic weekly Black Ops Six talk but, but I feel like we talked that. about it a yeah. lot um I I just prestiged for the second time I'm already like level fourteen so I'm gonna through it. I'm gonna hit prestige five probably tomorrow zombies is my biggest stress relief again. Uh, it's just which is I hop crazy on balls and i think at this point i'm approaching more hours in zombies than multiplayer i think i have more hours in, in zombies you than definitely do you definitely do um i think cause I, I don't know if i've gotten around i think i've gotten to the, to the 50s before i haven't gotten to 100 yet that's it's hard dude that's the thing when you get past round 30 the game gets difficult like very yeah, it, fast it's crazy well i heard that at at level 55 the zombie health caps so if like the new drill that just came out i saw a video where this guy was like okay we're on level 55 this this drill is pack a punch three times so if it one shots the zombies still that means that it's a one shot just in general and sure enough so uh they're saying that the best melee now is that drill that I haven't unlocked yet, but I'm close to it. I'm like halfway there. Hmm. Um, they have that hit list event. Dude, I will say, the amount of content they're dropping so far is... I'm very happy with it. I feel like there's always something new well, coming out. Yeah, and the fact that there's a new map coming out for zombies on the 5th, I was like, I didn't Less expect anything. Less two weeks. I didn't and expect like, anything I really the hope it. I really hope it lives up to... It, it seems like it's some kind of like Spanish castle looking thing. I don't think it's Spanish. The, 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 uh, the name of the map is spanish from what i saw is it um citadel de more that could be french french maybe french castle uh that's true that that probably is french actually it's french yeah citadel Fran- of the dead is okay it's oh it's an of the dead map that's interesting cool oh. i uh yeah i'm really looking forward to that new map I definitely like Liberty Falls more than Terminus, but that's just because Terminus is it's so much easier to get stuck somewhere. Like Yeah, the, um, it's it's what's strange is Terminus almost to me feels like a solo map. Really? It's really easy to play that map I might have solo. To hop on there and play. I just feel like Liberty Falls I know exactly what to do like every time. Like I'm getting to round 30 no problem every time. Um but Yeah, no, Zombies is 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 definitely I think the best it's been in a long time. I, I love it. Um, and that, you know, that's a lot coming from me because yeah. after Black Ops 2, I just wasn't into it anymore. Do, I really do. I think they would be dropping the ball if they didn't do some kind of Zombies Chronicles thing at the end here. It seems like a missed opportunity. I, dude, the, the way the mechanics of everything is perfect. More I, than, I love it. More than anything, I just think they need to have this game last for two years. Yeah, but Activision is. I Not know they don't want to do that, that but yet. like I li- do think it could this would be the one that literally I will pay another 70 bucks. I don't care. I will for 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 a, a continuation of as long as it's on the same I don't, I just don't want to have to go to a different game. I'll pay it, 40 bucks for more like some more campaign missions, zombies maps, multiplayer maps, whatever. I just like, want to I just I, don't want to have to download a whole new freaking game. And yeah, then have to I, get... I'm sick of the yearly cycle. I will say, yeah. I'm tired of it. it. I think it's Call of Duty's biggest weakness. Freaking... Every game has a short lifespan, so they they're either like, oh, we make this really good, and it doesn't matter because next year another one comes out, and that's what people go to, or, well, this is a shit show, so let's just get this out of here, and we just got to make it last until the next one comes out. So it's just like this weird up and down thing. We get a good one, we get a bad one, we get a worse one, we get a good one, we get a bad one. Because it's, it's been on a streak of doo-doo. Since last like... good one was 2019, Modern Warfare 2019. 
I think since and, then, he, and so. even then that one I that, think, that yeah Marvel even, like I said I think this is the best one since Black Ops 2 that is when did Black Ops 2 come out uh 2012 yeah so we're talking over 10 years ago to find a, another good Call of Duty in my opinion yeah because um I think it's 2019 just if you look at what that game was like it's one of it's, the best campaigns since the OGs. It's tertiary mode was Warzone. There was no like yeah. zombies or you station. Um, I don't think I got into Blackout as much as other people, but I think Blackout and then like first year of Warzone, like nothing since then is compared Battle Royale wise. Yeah. Um, anyways, I think that's enough Black Ops Six talk. Um. If if anybody is still like on the fence, like, oh, is this game worth seventy dollars? Yes. For the first time in a long time, I could say a Call of Duty is worth seventy dollars for sure. Uh, last big topic, um, Christopher Nolan's next film has been building its cast over the last couple weeks. Uh, so far we got Tom Holland, Matt Damon, Zendaya, uh, Robert Pattinson has joined. Oh wow. Um, at first people were the rumor was it was some kind of vampire movie and i was like that sounds like bullshit there's a, well, why would christopher nolan makes grounded films we're gonna make a vampire movie there's no way and then uh they came out and changed it and now it has to do something with helicopter pilots so i'm like fuck yeah that sounds cool to me um yeah i um i i i said one of the things with oppenheimer because a lot of people say that Tenet was him sh like seeing how far he could push things in terms of like, I'm not going to hold your hand and you are not going to know what the hell is going on unless you really think about it and like research it. And um, then he went with Oppenheimer and was like, okay, now I'm going to make a three hour historical drama and it's, it's going to be blockbuster worthy with only like uh, what was it a hundred million dollars which is not crazy <laughs> oh, for a blockbuster only well dude i mean red one was 250 million and yeah that bomb. yeah there's so many movies that they're coming out with that are 150 to 250 million dollars and they they're bombing so for him to make oppenheimer for 100 million and then it makes almost as much as barbie that's crazy and so everybody's like what does he do? What like where does he go from there? You know what I mean? Does he go for? I mean the the um, the theory is is he does one one for the studios, one for him, and so like Tenet was for him, Oppenheimer was for the studios. Now he's doing another one for him. Where it's like it's 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 more focused on like what he wants, like the kind of stuff he likes. Whereas Oppenheimer was, I mean that movie is a very serious drama. Like if you're not like prepared for it, you're gonna be like, oh man, this is intense. Um, I have up on Hummer on 4K. I need to watch it again, but, um, yeah, I'm really curious to see, um, Matt Damon as a lead in a Christopher Nolan film. I think that's going to be fantastic. I love Matt Damon. Matt Damon. And Tom Holland does, finally, Tom Holland gets a good role outside of Freaking fucking Spider-Man. Because Spider he's made some stinkers. That's, uh, I won't say stinkers, just stuff that nobody watched. I thought that, um... He wasn't a good pick for uh, Uncharted. I don't blame him for that. I would have taken that if I was an actor. And they're like, yes, hey, you want to? But I'm just saying, I don't think he was a good pick. That's how I feel about that. I thought it was fine. I think he's a great actor. I think he just and he he definitely dedicates to like doing the research and stuff. Like he went and bartended at like a random bar but somewhere. He just looks like, too well, young for the role. Is my problem. Mark Wahlberg's too young for the Sully character too. It was just all around. Just a, it's it's dude. It's Sony. What do you expect? Sony is... I don't know what it is with Sony. It's like they're smoking crack over there while they figure out how to do these movies. All of the the, the Sony Spider-Verse movies are half-assed, like, just throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. It was a miracle to me that Venom 3 had any emotional weight to it whatsoever. And that I think that was really because the director tried. But Morbius is ridiculous. Um, like, Morbius, dude, Morbius, yeah. Morbius feels like 10 people were in the editing room arguing, and that's what we got. Um, Madam Web? I forgot I, that it even I, came out, dude. Madam Web is like they literally were like, it's bring your kid to work day, and the kids did the work while the adults like drank coffee and smoked or something. Like, crack. And, like, <laughs> Get into crack. It is, Madam Web is one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. 
Like, it's not even so bad it's good. It's it's just it's like what the hell? Like who thought this was a good idea to spend money on? That's such a shame, dude, cuz it is cuz they they have they have they literally own Spider-Man, one of the most popular properties. And they don't do ever. anything with it. They just and do what you garbage. Do is, what, I, they, I don't know what it is about Sony and like the quality of the storytelling. They just... They have the money to get some real writers together and say, Okay, we trust you to write a script. And we have the budget. We need a home run. And instead we get... The Venom movies... Morbius. I mean, Craven the Hunter. And, and does not, I mean, Craven the Hunter seems cool because it's rated R, but otherwise, it it looks like more of the same to me. Venom is very cheesy looking. Not bad. I don't dislike the Venom movies. Tom Hardy carries. I didn't know that it was Tom Hardy doing the voice of Venom too. That that that's actually really cool. Um, I think what, what was it? The second one that was kind of eh, or I don't remember. But so the second one is like. Crazy! It like it's like breakneck speed the whole time. Like the the pacing is crazy, and like Woody Harrelson is just playing like a crazy person. It's not even like it's just Woody Harrelson, but he's crazy. Like there's no real character. Uh, Andy Serkis directed that, and I think that's why that movie's not a complete mess. Um, because hmm. I, I heard he got brought in like last minute to do that. But I thought the third one was my favorite. Honestly, I think it had my favorite action moments. My favorite emotional moments it just seems like from venom 1 to venom 3 is supposed to be a year time span in in those movies they feel like completely different movies they almost feel like they're not even associated with each other besides the fact that tom hardy and venom are you know bantering like the first venom movie is cliche freaking superhero movie but anyways I'm not sure. Oh, we 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 somehow we got from there from talking about Christopher Nolan. Anyways, Christopher Nolan is probably my favorite um, director. I think today um, he's in he's influenced my filmmaking a lot, especially since he's a. I mean, writer directors are who I look up to the most because I'm like, okay, that's like as a writer director. Not only do you have full control over the vision, but like, you you. You have the ability to write stuff knowing that, okay, I'm directing it, so I know how I'm going to do that, you know? And so watching them do that and execute it the way they want is, um, I mean, the best way for me to, to learn about how to do the craft that I'm doing. So um, Denis Villeneuve, I don't think, writes his own stuff. So it's, I think he does, but he does, I don't know if he has written everything he's done. I, I would have to look it up, but he's another inspiration. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, Spielberg, I think, has influenced everyone at this point. Like, Jordan Peele is, like, beat for beat, like, making Spielberg-esque stuff. Like, Nope was literally Jaws with, like, Also, Nope alien. was so good. Yeah, I, I, it's crazy to me that people are, like, they either love Nope or they hate it. That is a love-hate movie, apparently. I thought it was so much better than I Us. Think Probably, I still think Get Out is his best film, like written wise. It's it's the best written one. Probably because people wanted to see the the aliens, and then they found out that it it wasn't like literally like just it's not green men. what you expect. Yeah, yeah. It's and so I think that's all it is, and it's just it's like man. I, the first time unique. I saw it, I was disappointed. The second time I saw it, knowing how it all works out, I was like, this is genius. Yeah. And I, the second time I saw it, I saw it in IMAX too. It was amazing in IMAX. Um, it's freaking Sprite Cranberry. I see it, man. It's just staring at me right in the eyes. <laughs> uh, we got the Shirley Temple 7 Up, too, to try. So, yeah, somebody at work tried it recently. They were like, it doesn't taste like a Shirley Temple, but it's still good. It's cherry pomegranate. So I don't, we'll see. Um, the story is actually pretty solid. It's very artificial tasting, but Theo loves it. I'm um, like, cool, you can drink that. I'm drinking my Sprite Cranberry. <laughs> Um, on to our movie, TV, uh, whatever recommendation uh, for today. You want to go first? Um, so I was actually going to recommend, I was going to give you kind of a, a unique one here. So when I was doing some stuff at work for the uh, Marine Corps um, birthday thing that they were doing, um, I was talking to, to a supervisor who was asking me to sort of set it up, and he was like, yeah, you can find like old 
uh, clips from from like movies and, and TV shows. He goes, um, look up Gomer Pyle. And I was like, okay. So Gomer Pyle was a, a character that was supposed to be in the Marines, and he was like too innocent for his own good, right? Uh, it's it's like a like a I want to say like 50s oh and 60s. yeah 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 it's yeah. it's it's but to me it was a very like it's remember this nostalgic it's very wholesome I think this guy was in like Ant- the Andy Griffin show or something like that the guy who plays him uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Played by Jim Nabros and introduced in the middle of the third season. Um, but I. Oh, so he he had his own. The character had his own show, but he was also the same character in Andy Griffin. Apparently. So yeah. That's uh, crazy. Gomer Pyle is like like I remember watching that stuff and I was like, dude, this holds up. But it's wow, like, you get. Is that one of the first spinoffs? I, I feel like that's gotta be because this is like the '60s, dude. Like Andy Griffin was like '50s to '60s, and this is in 1964. Gomer Pyle, USMC, five seasons sitcom. Yeah, crazy. Either way, I I really like. I actually was laughing at some of the stuff that that, yeah, was being, that old that, humor is clever, man. Yeah, and um, and it's like I said, it's it's very like wholesome. Like there's nothing like it's drier humor. I I, say. I I mean I like guess yeah. It's uh, safer, like more politically, politically correct. You like, I mean, one of the first things that happens in the show, I think, is like, um, they sit him down in like the the barber chair, and the uh, the the drill sergeant, he's basically just like, all right, tell him, tell him what what you want, and uh, Gomer Pyle's like, oh, I want to, I want you to like take it down by this much, and then I want it at this number on the top, and then square to the back, this and that, right? And then uh, he, after giving like like you know two minutes worth of directions, the drill sergeant looks at the barber and goes, and he just starts shaving everything off. <laughs> just starts going at it, and I was I was like, I was like, ah, oh, like like that's yeah, it's to be expected. But then afterwards, Gomer Pyle's just like, oh, you know, well, it's probably your first time, so I don't blame you. And I'm like, <laughs> he's, he's just, I was like, he's not even mad. He's just like, it is what it is. But um. Yeah, no, that's that's my recommendation. You can find clips of it on YouTube, but it says it's on Pluto TV. Gomer Pyle, it's it's G O M E R, and then Pyle is P P Y L E. Yeah. So, yeah, go check it out, dude. I mean, those classic TV shows. There's something about them, like Gilligan's Island. Oh, I need to watch that, it, dude. It's legitimately funny, and like the characters are like well written. Like you actually, like they actually have like. Like okay, it, it's it's hard to do at least at least in a movie. I find it really hard making it so that like dialogue is not interchangeable is one of the ways to like like prove to yourself that like the characters are unique. And uh, it's not always possible, especially when it's like a group setting and people are just saying things like they could be interchangeable. But I remember watching Gilligan's Island, and it's like yeah, these characters are completely different than each other. It's it's really interesting. Um. My recommendation is Jaws because I, I'm surprised to hear more and more like, oh, yeah, I've never seen Jaws. Jaws still holds up, hundred percent. That shit is so well written, it's so well directed, so well edited. The score is amazing because it's John Williams. Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm telling you, watch that movie and then go in the ocean and try not to think about sharks. It's impossible. I mean, there are shots, they, they mix in real footage of sharks here and there that really sells it. And uh, to this day, they have not made a shark movie that lives up to Jaws. It's it, And I mean, we're talking about a movie from like the early 70s, right? It's like 72 or something like that. Um, um, 75. 75. So we're talking over 50 years now. Or almost, wait, is it about to be the 50th anniversary? Holy crap, dude! I gotta go see this bitch in theaters. They gotta wow, be Wow, the dude. Oh, I hope they re-release it in IMAX. Because they, they've played it in IMAX for like the 40th, I remember. So, I want to go see that in IMAX, hell yeah. Um. Anyways, 
I remember I got into a schizo rant because somebody was talking shit about Poyo Loco and said that it was like the worst schizo. thing they've ever seen. It was like student level, student film level bad. And I'm like, what student films are you watching? Because most student films I watch don't have a production budget at all. You know, that's that's insulting. Uh, like, explain yourself. And he couldn't really explain it. And I also talked shit because I was like, I don't trust, I don't trust anybody's opinion who gives Jaws uh, one star. And, uh, He's like, oh, well, I just think it's overrated, this and that. And I'm like, you could still think something's overrated, but you have to acknowledge that it's a fucking masterpiece. Jaws is a masterpiece, and it's a masterpiece that shouldn't exist because they, the shark was supposed to be in the movie more than it was, but it kept breaking down, their animatronic shark. And so they relied on not showing the monster, and then every Jaws movie after that shows the monster way too much. Um the only thing that I can really compare to it is like Tremors. They don't show the Graboids for most of the movie. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're there. And you're like, what the hell? I've never seen anything. It's well, like a giant uh, worm. Cloverfield um, was kind of like that as well. But Cloverfield was like a whole yeah, different kind of movie. I think being found footage also means like it's it's kind of hard to show it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, that's a good example. But uh, Jaws to me is... It's literally one of the greatest movies ever made. If you have not seen it, it's got it. It's always streaming somewhere. I think the the rights to it bounces around. It's probably on Peacock because that's Universal and that's like one of their biggest properties. It's on Netflix um, right now. There you go. The first Jaws. The other ones are whatever. Uh, the other ones are fun at times. Jaws: The Revenge is not fun at all. That the movie's pretty stupid. Um, like the shark like follows her to the Bahamas or something. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Makes no sense. Um. <laughs> It like Dude. knows. It just like knows that she's part of the family and follows her to the Bahamas to terrorize her. It's like, come on, man. That's this like is getting some, supernatural. Some Sharknado crap, bro. Yeah, no. Um, there was rumors that that Spielberg might remake Jaws for a, like a long time, and then like nothing now. Dude, um, did you hear they're I gonna think do? If anybody's gonna remake it, it should be him. They're gonna do another sequel trilogy for Star Wars. Yeah, I don't care anymore. I literally do not. I will watch the the Mandalorian Grogu movie and maybe season two of Andor. I, the rest of it can fuck off. I, I don't, don't care. I don't care how how uh, uh, the first season of Andor was amazing. By the I way, still, oh, still I still need to watch that. Um, I don't Only care. Anything worth watching. I don't care how controversial it might it might be. I think literally with that sequel trilogy, they they need to say it's not canon. Remove the seven, eight, and nine from it. They won't. I know. I know they I, won't. I, but I wish I, they would. My my, uh, my first AD on Poyo Loco was trying to convince me that they had done that. And I was like, "What? I'm pretty sure people would be making a bigger deal about that." He's like, "No, they did it, man. It's not canon anymore." And I'm like, "I can't find anything that says that." Yeah, not for se not for seven eight nine. They what they did was they took the uh, the books and stuff like that that came out before seven eight nine uh, came out, as, as well as like the, the yeah games they cherry pick and they they said this is no longer canon and then they they mm -hmm. chose stuff that they liked like uh, Admiral. What's his name? Thrawn or something like that, and in Boba Fett and stuff like that. Like they yeah. cherry picked what they wanted. Um, I think Disney has completely ruined Star Wars. It, but I will say this: I, I am, I am not. Let the the uh, the one through three trilogy is nostalgic, but compared to a New Hope versus Return of the Jedi storytelling wise, it's just not very good i i but think i i seriously think besides those first three movies star wars has never been that great i think it's been one of those overhyped franchises that like over its time has shown its its uh chinks in its armor and it's to the point now where everybody sees through it dude episode three is so good dude attack of the clones is horrible yeah, I, haven't, I, I, I see. I, have, I I haven't gone back and watched one or two in a long time, but three is to this day still like probably like one of my favorite movies of all time. It's not my my one hundred percent favorite, but like it's there is episode three some, is just so dark compared to the other two. It's, it's also just, just the visuals tone. are great, man, and the music and the music and, is phenomenal. The music's always been pretty good. I will say that. Yeah, That's but like like consistent. It's because uh, it's just all I think of is like when it goes back between uh, Anakin and Obi Wan fighting, and then Yoda and, and uh, Palpatine fighting, and like it's just going back and forth, and it's like, dude, like 
To there, me, it this feels is like George rough. Lucas. Yeah. Want, I think I feel like George Lucas. That's the movie he wanted to make, and it's like, well, shit, I gotta make one and two first. Yeah. I can't just get to that. And so that it's just like, like Phantom Menace is fine. It it's it's kind of silly, but it's fine. I think it 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 kind of ruins the mystery of Star Wars with the whole Mitochondrian thing. Um, uh, Attack of the Clones is a mess. Like the first act is okay, then the second act is so boring. Uh, the third act is just like, why didn't we get to this part sooner? Because there's so much action and stuff. Like, the arena thing was, like, a cool marketing ploy with all the stuff they did with it. But otherwise, like, you look at it, nothing really happens. You know? The only thing yeah. that happens is, like, Jango Fett dies. That's, like, the only crazy thing. Yeah. I will say uh, Kenobi was, like, probably the closest that we've gotten to, like, I still think that should have been a movie. It, it I think so they too. Fucked up. I, I think you are right. That would have made Dude, that would have made bucks if that, it was a movie that came out. That fight between between uh Obi Wan and, and, and Darth Vader is like it's that good, yeah. Hit, bro. Everything else is just like I I feel like they made I, I didn't like how they kinda made Obi Wan a bitch. Um, <laughs> What was the, you were talking about the when um when Leia does like the slide and you were like you're like what the heck is that dude yeah dude it has some of the worst <laughs> fucking stunt work I've ever seen from a high budget TV show like I I don't know what happened man whoever the stunt guy was fire that motherfucker I don't know why it looks so bad <laughs> there's a guy he literally like he the branch hits him and he like falls like a second too late it looks so forced um the the like i can't i just i can't stand when like it happens a lot in movies when like somebody gets knocked on the ground and they have to like somehow get the upper hand uh -huh. um well there's where, like, like it's like, just clunky and it's like nah if that was real life that shit would have happened way different in, you in, know? The, in the first avengers uh there's a it's like when black widow first gets like introduced right she throws her, her head back to, like, headbutt the guy behind her, but only her hair hits him, and he's all, oh! And I'm like, yeah, it's just... Yeah, Black Widow's got some really bad CG, but I, I blame, I blame no, not, the pandemic not, for that. Not Black Widow. It was, like, the Avengers movie. Oh. It was... It was it, there's literally a scene where it's just her hair hits the dude, and he acts like he got hit with a brick. Like, it's, it's like... The, the, the Last Jedi, the... <laughs> there, there's a shot that people make fun of a lot where those guards and snoke's little temple place or whatever one of them straight up just like falls on the ground yeah yeah like, kept that in i'm like are you kidding me man if i saw that as a director i'd have been like oh what the <laughs> act the one well see and that's <laughs> like, the thing this thing they could they could probably fix that with with like i bet you there's a way to like paint over that right but there's so many ways to go about it yeah like well, i mean like now that it's released like you can fix that but like dude i just i mean i talked i talked i, t I talk about it, it's crazy for like uh for a franchise that i've fallen out of love with i sure do like debate it a lot um the 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 real issue to me was they spent all this money on star wars and disney was like we need to shit out a trilogy today you know what i mean and so why did they not secure jj abrams for a full trilogy i don't know if he didn't want to do it I don't know if it wasn't offered to him, but the fact that he did the he did uh, the Force Awakens and it was like super solid. I thought he was not busy. groundbreaking, but what making what the only thing that came out around that like Overlord came out right. He produced that. He didn't direct it. Oh, then I don't know. He produced that. Who directed he produces, it? He produces. I don't know. He produces his ass off though. He's like Ridley Scott, where he produces everything now. Um. Ridley Scott's got like eighty movies right now oh, that he's Julius attached to as a Avery. producer. So okay, what but, what what as a producer, what do you do aside from just like supply money? So that's a common misconception. The only time that a producer supplies money is if they're an executive producer, usually. Okay. Um a producer by because people are like, oh, like the cliche thing is nobody knows what a producer really does. Producers make the movie like they, they make sure the movie gets made. They do everything they can to get the movie made, whether it's their connections, leveraging their connections to get the people attached, to get people in contact with the financers, 
maybe they're friends with a big name actor and they can convince them to do a part um i mean it could literally be like oh i'm gonna attach myself as a producer to this script um and uh i will talk to this director and this director will do it because i'm a producer on the film like producers in some way or another affect how the movie gets made or how fast it gets made or who gets attached um if if you want to know truly what a producer does go watch the miniseries the offer with miles teller it's about how they made the godfather um it is phenomenal 10 out of 10 miniseries one of my favorite miniseries ever i, I kind of want to rewatch it because it's so well written um because but... he, maybe he was just yeah producing Sometimes a producer literally just by putting their name on it, people want to do it. So if JJ Abrams puts his name on something, people are like, well, well that's why JJ Abrams is on there. That's, Let's do it. That's why I was interested in the movie to begin with, because I was like, Oh, it's JJ Abrams. Like I know JJ Abrams makes good stuff. So and then when I found out that he when he told me that right now that he didn't direct it, I was like, Oh. Well, he was a producer on Cloverfield. Yeah, I found that out recently too. I was like, dude, I yeah. lied to. I thought it, he directed that. Can you believe that the guy who made Cloverfield also did the the second or the second and third movie in the Apes Planet of the Apes movies and then the Batman? That's a talented son Jesus. of a bitch right there. That guy knows how to make some really like dark gritty stuff, man. He, Either way, uh, like I believe I, his name is. Um, well, you know what? Not, I'm gonna look it up. Drew Goddard is it? Why didn't J.J. Abrams? Uh, it, Matt day. Reeves, God damn it! What is wrong with me, Matt Reeves? J.J. Uh, Abrams didn't direct the Last Jedi because Ryan Johnson was originally started or, sl or sl started. Uh, slated yeah, they to helm literally that had like they had three different directors for that trilogy. They were like basically, okay, you're gonna be working on this while this one's in production, and the third director literally like left. And so after J. J. the Abrams Last Jedi, he left, and so and I guess they couldn't convince Ryan Johnson to do it because Netflix was like, oh please come over here and make a knives out two three and four or whatever they're doing um and so jj's like all right i'll do it that paycheck looks good and he came in and he he it's a lot of people describe god we've been going on so long about star wars last thing i'll say it, to me uh the rise of rise of skywalker that's what it's called right the last one yeah yeah, it uh, it feels like they were like shit. We need to come up with something right now. We got to fix all this. Doesn't matter how. And they went to Reddit and looked at all of the the great ideas that Reddit had and just threw them all at the Dude, wall. That's like the so. only movie where after I finished watching it, I wasn't like, I wasn't like stoked, and I wasn't like this movie sucks. I was just kind of like, I hate. All right, it. I remember I being at the theater just going. This is so bad. I, I remember, but I walked now out. This is so bad. I walked out and I was like, "All right." That was That's that was I how I, the Last Jedi. Yeah, I well, walked out and I was like, "I don't really know if I like that." So, or not. with the Last Jedi, the only reason why I remember leaving that that movie being like, "Oh, that was cool," is because of the freaking scene with the the uh, the ship goes to like. Um, oh yeah, that, that, like, that's definitely a highlight. That, that was sure. cool, but then like like, I think like two years later, I, I realized, oh. They just changed the entire landscape of combat in space for Star Wars. Because that means you can make drones that do that and fly into ships. Yeah, there was no reason for What's-Her-Face to commit Sudoku the way she did, <laughs> is what people are talking commit about. But, yeah. Um, That's a term that I say, man. You got that from me. Well, I... Put it this way, man. They they would have to completely turn things around for me to get invested in anything Star Wars related. Now. I, like said, I said they they would literally Andor have to. Two, I know that's where it ends. And Andor season one was. Andor season one has no business being as good as it is, Chris. It's one of those shows where I think there's how many episodes are in Andor season one, dude? It's it's some weird number. Seven. Twelve episodes. So Twelve, they're okay. like. They're like four episode arcs. So like the it's like a three act season where the first four episodes tackle one arc, the second episode or the second batch of four episodes is like another so, like plot but like start to finish from episode 1 to 4, from 5 to 8, following Andor, but like do it's just like there it's it's a slower burn where there's more dialogue and stuff and it's definitely like there's political ploys going on and stuff. But then there's these crazy action payoffs. There was a scene with ships that had a big payoff. Like, 
Andor, hands down, I think, besides first two seasons of Mandalorian, is the best Star Wars thing Disney's done since, uh, what was it, Rogue One. Rogue One was awesome. I'm going to have to log into the Disney Plus and, and try and watch it because... It's a good, like, I I've well been, I've been meaning like, to watch a show for a while, um, and I just haven't known what to watch. And I think Andor might be what I need to watch. Dude, it's I, good, man. Dude, dude, just, and I know we've been kind of schizophrenic about Star Wars for a while, but, like, um, dude, I, I, you know what I miss? I miss being excited about like the Lego Star Wars stuff because they always had wow. such cool concepts for that. And I think like, that's the only good thing that's come from all the, the Disney stuff with Star Wars is they've had a lot more like concepts. Well, that was the thing cool. before it though, wasn't it? What do you mean? Was Lego Star Wars the thing before Disney had it? Yes, but they like, dude, they came up with the set recently. They had like dark versions. Oh, you of everybody. mean like Lego sets? Gotcha. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like, dude, they had like a it's like a good. a light side Darth Vader. So he's like in all white, and his lightsaber is blue. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like they had little that's concepts cool. like that, and yeah, that's, pretty cool. that's it's it's cool that they've had the inspiration to do that. But other than that, like most of the Disney stuff has sucked. Mandalorian has been decent. Boba Fett sucked. Um. Yeah, well, Boba Fett didn't... I think people hate on Boba Fett too much. I think the issue is Boba Fett... It wasn't but, about Boba but, Fett, man. Like, what the heck? It it, it was like Mandalorian 2.5. 2. Yeah, they sh and they could have called it that, it. and I would have been fine with it. It started out as a Boba Fett show, and then it turns into Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, but I thought the Mandalorian stuff was great. That's how he gets the Darksaber and shit back, right? I in think. That, in that, yeah. Yeah. I I think Boba Fett is overhated. I liked Boba Fett more than Book of Boba Fett more than I liked uh, season three of Mandalorian. Season three of Mandalorian. I didn't see season three. Rough. You are not missing out, man. You I can to, watch I wanna, YouTube video. And it's just it's satisfying. I want to rewatch Kenobi. Um, dude, they need to do like a Western you, style. They, I'm pretty sure somebody did a, a a um their own like fan cut of Kenobi and made it better. Uh, they need to do like a like a Western style of uh like bounty hunter show for that's how part of mandalorian was like when it first started but i mean like uh was it was it mandalorian season two or was it boba fett where like there there's like that village maybe it was season, i think it was season two and then cad bane all the seasons have a village but 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 uh cad bane shows up at the village and like there's yeah, the dude that's like in the, two. yeah and that was sick like that was a cool sort of yeah. like story to have i, like, I want to show about that guy <laughs> yeah yeah, um, but you know, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I a lot of people blame Kathleen Kennedy for for how Star Wars turned I, yeah. out. Yeah, she was she was um she Is was she a big she was a that? producer for Steven Spielberg and and George Lucas, I think. Uh, uh I might have those details wrong. She was a producer for at least one of them, and people are like, yeah, she should stick to producing. She's good at making shit happen, but she's not good at like calling the shots. So. Is she I guess still, that's who I blame. But... Is she still in charge or what? I believe so, yeah. Let me see. I don't know. Uh, Either way. I know, the, I know the guy who's responsible for the Clone Wars, like Dave Filoni or whatever, is responsible for more stuff now. But... Um, she's 71? Yeah, like I said. Why is she in charge of the biggest franchise? Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? It's like... You don't. She she doesn't know what what our generation wants from Star Wars. She's just like, oh well, they want nostalgia, but no. you know. And I I feel like they're like, oh, Baby Yoda was a hit. Now we got to find a way to make cute things and everything, you know. And it's like, ugh. either way, um, I need to take a dump, so I'm ready to leave. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Thanks for, for getting us to episode 60, guys. Uh, should have at least one or two guests next week. Um, again, sorry about the logistical side of this stuff. Um, I might have some facial hair because it, it's it's real quiet in the industry right now, and I don't shave when I'm not auditioning. And you can already see it's starting to, yeah. starting to get some I, stubble. I, I, got a, I got a little bit of something, too, but that's just because uh, I'm lazy. Um, anyways. Uh, uh, Danny thank Dorito 23 on everything. What were you going to say? I was going to say thank you for getting us 60. Um, the biggest thing about getting 60 is like, how do I say it? We were gone for a long time. And the fact that, you know, people are, are, are watching still, it's that, that means a lot. Like we had that, what was it like? 
two years of, of no new episodes. Hiatus, yeah. And so I appreciate it. I know you appreciate it. Um, but thanks for getting us to 60. I'm, I'm ready for a hundred, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready yeah, for well, it. I don't know what we're going to do for a hundred. We got to do something special. Bro. Yeah. Um, buy some G feel, get some fit butters, code Danny D on both of those. Subscribe to our Patreon, come game with us and ask questions and win some stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for 61. Hopefully World War III doesn't start before then. But peace.